So now in this video, we're going to quickly look at using an op-amp comparator. It's going to be an inverting comparator though, this time. So this is a demonstration circuit. We're going to go through it quickly. There's a lot more to cover on this, but um, hopefully this helps make op-amps and comparators a little easier to understand. So in any case, we're going to use the uh, LM358. And while we're zoomed back, I'll uh, just mention, we're going to set a voltage at the non-inverting input. That will be our reference voltage. That's going to hold steady as long as we don't change the supply voltage. We'll have half the supply voltage. So our uh, signal that will vary is at the inverting input right there. So what that means is the output's going to be uh, more or less the opposite of the input. And it's going to actually go as close to either rail as it can but in case if we go up in voltage above halfway then the output will be low if we go below the halfway point of the voltage then the output will go high so low high and then high low it's inverted it is the opposite so let's uh, zoom in a little bit I'm using the uh, LM358 from this kit here so there's a couple things to uh, point out there's actually two of them we're only going to use this one though on the left output is the top pin inverting input is the uh, second pin down and then the non-inverting input is third pin down so you'll notice here that the inputs are actually uh, different than what you see on the schematic so the way I drew this we have the uh, plus up there whereas the minus is on top of the plus plus is on top of the minus there so you got to pay close attention to the uh, which one is on top and bottom on the schematic and also which one's on top and bottom in this case for the integrated circuit we have to uh, flip them around so I already wired up the uh, trim pot we have that uh, squared away I'm using a 10 kilo ohm trim pot exact value does not matter all this does is look at voltage it doesn't depend on current these inputs but uh, lower value components that are setting the voltage will allow more uh, wasted current but in case we got the resistive element across the two ends and then a wiper that slides across them makes a voltage divider we covered that in other videos not going to go over that too much and that comes over to the uh, second pin there so that is the inverting input that we got there now we also have to uh, power the integrated circuit let's uh, not forget that and that's not always shown on the schematic sometimes they just leave that blank they assume you know you gotta power it but uh, the power pins the uh, VCC positive supply over there and then ground is the uh, so that's pin 8 ground is pin number 4 so you can see I already wired uh, those up now we're going to set our voltage at the non-inverting input so I'll slide that over and it's over there uh, quite a bit so it says a hundred kilo ohm resistors again uh, value doesn't matter uh, as long as you have the uh, voltage you want to set so we want to set half the supply voltage I'm going to use 10 kilo ohm resistors we wire it the same way so that's going to the positive rail I have to make sure I go to the non-inverting input third pin down and then again another 10 kilo ohm resistor to the uh, negative rail right there and we got our halfway, half uh, supply voltage. Pretty straightforward. That's it. Now, we would like this to do something. We, we have this fully wired. Without a load, the output actually will go all the way to ground when it is low. But I found in the last couple of videos that that is not the case with the LEDs being lit up. But it will still work okay lighting up LEDs. So... For this circuit you really need to use 5 volts with this integrated circuit. Those are uh, topics for other videos as you learn about op amps. But uh, in any case this is just a demonstration of the inverting comparator. So this LED I want to light up when the output's low. So I'm going to put the opposite side of the output to the uh, positive rail, the long lead, the anode to that jumper right there, short lead, the cathode down one row and we will protect it with a 220 ohm resistor so again the output is that top pin up there now we're going to do the opposite with uh, this LED so we want it to light when the output is high and so 
We'll take the uh, short lead, the cathode, go to that jumper, long lead, the anode, go up one row right there. And now we'll grab this resistor and stretch all the way across. So we're going up to the output and then to the LED. Pretty straightforward. We've wired stuff like this quite a bit in this series, so I'm not going to uh, go into that into too much detail. Should be uh, pretty uh, understandable. So there is the uh, circuit. Looks like you can see it pretty good. Now we'll grab the uh, power supply. As I said, I've been finding that this really only works with about five volts with this particular op amp. So we'll look at alternatives later on in the series. This is just uh, quickly looking at this circuit. So we have the uh, power on. So as you can see, we're about halfway point, so it's hard to tell if we're closer to the positive rail or closer to the negative rail, halfway. But here you can see, this is the positive side of the uh, load. So that tells us that the output is going to ground. So it, the output is low. So I want to go low with this to change that. So low here sets the output high. So there you can see we got the negative rail. So that means we have to be connected to the positive rail as much as the uh, op amp will do anyways. It's actually not getting all the way to five volts, probably three and a half volts. But in case, that's enough to get that current through the LED and ground. And now the output again is low, should go to zero volts, especially with this one. But I find with the current demands of this load, that's probably preventing that. It's probably getting to about 1.2 volts. But again, we got five volts there. So that voltage difference, enough to get the LED to light up. And you can also see about how much current going through. This is usually about one or two milliamps off. But uh, in any case, it's about eight milliamps when the output's low and about eight milliamps slightly lower when the output is high. So in any case, that's it for this video. Op amps are, uh, there's a lot of material to learn about them, but their basic operations are fairly simple, fairly straightforward. So that's why I'm just doing a quick demonstration circuits with it. It's really something you gotta read to get the particulars of them. But in any case, hopefully you still enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, subscribe, the bell. I will see you in the next video.